All right, I uh, hope you guys can see this, um, if it's coming in clear. But um, just wanna go over a couple of things. This is a, um, this is a Chrysler 360 crank, and um, it's actually a SCAT 9000. And this is, um, I got this from CNC Motorsports. And when I got it, the, the crank was fine. There was no problem with it, it was straight. Um, but the oil holes right here, they were a little sharp. And I have gotten cranks actually that, um, you know, straight from the, from the uh, manufacturer where, you know, you go to put them in, you know, I was, I was younger. I didn't know as much as I, I did now, but, um, you know, hindsight 2020, I guess. But, um, I put this in and... I went to go spin it around in the, in the engine block for the first time and, and it was kind of tough and then it just got loose again. And I didn't really understand what happened, but what had happened was uh, that the, where they drilled it, 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 had a, it had burrs on it, you know, various locations. And it actually, it caught the bearing and shaved it and that drilling that if you want to call it a drilling or whatever but that um that piece of bearing went inside the crank and when i went to plastic gauge it i saw a little you know shiny thing in there and pulled it out and it was like a drilling and i you know my immediate thought was holy cow you know they you know they messed up my crank or they, they didn't clean it, whatever. But then I looked at the cap and you could see that what had happened is that actually um, shaved the actual bearing and you know it, it ended up in one of the oil feed holes. So um, that, that was just what I experienced uh, early on. And when you get these cranks, um, especially nowadays, from these manufacturers you you just can't throw them in a car you just can't you know go have fun um what you got to do is you got to check everything you got to you know check the sizes of the journals and uh, make sure everything measures correctly i have this is actually the the journals are actually just a tad big okay they all might the same okay but they're just a tad big and i'm talking i i think it's uh it came out to It was like uh, two ten thousandths, okay? Uh, too big on each on each one from um, from the specs in the, in the owner's or the actual shop manual. So um, just kind of show you what I got going on here. I do, I made these uh, V-blocks, okay? Just a piece of two by four, not to be in them. And you'll see that I have these two, and you're probably like, what the hell is that? So the two by fours are too wide for, you know, sitting in the actual, the, the main journal. So uh, what I did was this is just, you know, fence post. And I just throw this underneath the middle one. And I just, I wedge it. Just make sure that they're still on these two decent ways and there you go I mean it's it's supported okay um, they do have fixtures I mean I got nothing against them it's just I'm, I'm cheap so that's what I do um, so I'll show you uh, I'm not gonna go through the process and video me grinding on a crank I mean you guys can pretty much figure figure out that part um, but this is just my method of what I do. So I start from the inside and work my way out. So at first I'll use, you know, a, a small taper like that and just, just clean up on the inside there. Uh, not much. You just, like I said, you just want to take care of the burrs. And after that's done, I will go to this one and, you know, I'll stick the uh, the bit in there, and I, this is slow speeding out. Every single one of 
these bits, I use slow speed. I don't do any high speed or anything like that. But I'll go in there and I'll just kind of gently massage that over and taper it a little bit, it, you know, as much as I can without running into the edges here. And yeah, I'll just work my way to something like this where I can get deeper and roll it over and kind of create like a smooth transition. You want to radius as much as you can without taking too much material off. And that's, you know, that's basically the, you know, the, the first stage, I guess you want to say. The second stage would be to actually smooth out what you did. And then I'll get like a 600 grit, okay? And there's WD-40 on this. I just get some 600 and I just go with the movement of the bearing, okay? I don't go crossways. I just keep going with the movement of the bearing. And after that is done, I will get 1500 and I will lightly go over the entire journal. And when I say lightly, I'm talking, you know, put it around the journal, give it a couple of these, count to five, spin it, count to five, and just keep working your way around to get to where you started. After that is complete, I will get a shoelace, okay, and I'll put some swirl remover on it. I just kind of spread the swirl remover in and uh, clump it together, and then I'll wrap this around the around the journal, and then just you know a couple of times, and basically just polish the surface. Okay, now this is not gonna uh, give you a mere finish unless you really work at it. Um, I just made a few passes. This journal, I probably within you know sanding it with the 600 and going to 15 and polishing it with the shoelace, I probably have maybe you know 10 minutes, okay, maybe. And this is going in a street uh, street car. Um, this is a cast crank. It's going in a 360. It's this is a stroker crank. It's a four inch stroke. So it's going to be 408. It's bore 30 over. And this is going in a Durango. Um, and and that's um, it's going to be a sleeper. Now, I didn't go full on blast, you know, performance race taper with these. Um, what that looks like is something like this. This is not a Chrysler crank. This is a 350. And this one, I don't know if you, can, if you can see that, but this one definitely has a, um, a lot, a lot more radius. I mean, it's actually indented, but um, yeah, this is just a, a 350 crank uh, standard stroke. Um, this came out of a dirt car. And this saw upwards of 8,000 RPM, almost 9,000. And it still checks out all right. It still has a nice ring. However, the snout, the, the nose where the, the vibration dampener goes, or the harmonic damper, it, uh, it, it doesn't hold a balancer on. So. Um, yeah, that crank is, is toast. I mean, you could probably fix it, okay? You, there's a place I, I know in, in Cleveland, Ohio, it's called Metals Crank. Uh, they, they did a few crankshafts for me, and I mean, it's phenomenal work, but uh, I, moved, I moved away from Ohio and went to Georgia because of the weather. And I, I haven't seen a place like that down here. Of course, I haven't looked either, so that's that. Um, back to this. So, um, yeah, that, that's what I do to the, to the journals. And I only did this one, okay? So, I mean, it, it looks nice. I mean, like, like I said, it's not going to be a uh, uh, really, really polished surface, but at least it's, um, it's better than what it came with. And, you know, you guys ever see those uh, 
those those videos of where these cranks are made. You know, they're not they're not being real ginger with them either. They're you know slamming them around, throwing them on the ground, and it's not going to hurt them. I mean, it's it's not going to hurt them. Uh, what these things go through in an engine is just it's it's horrible. So, you know, you think this the crank is in, when the engine's running, especially under high stresses. Uh, what happens is the the crank it it flexes, it moves, okay, and th that's why you you need a looser clearance so it'll allow that flex without touching the bearing. And this, um, without doing anything, without polishing anything, came in at two thou, which would be point, um, I think point oh five one. Something like that millimeter. It's I know it's five one, but um, that's what it came in, and I put it together, and I I, I I had it on my mind. I was like, I should loosen it, I should loosen it, and I just I ate myself up about it, and uh, finally I was just like, you know what, if Tony's doing a live, I'll just throw it out there, and he's like, brother man. Just, just do it. it. It's on your mind. You're gonna always think about it. Do it while it's out of the, mo the out of the uh, truck. And I'm like, you know, it's so simple of a solution, but you want to get it done. You you want to focus on getting the engine in the car, and you know, maybe got to buy another set of bearings, even though you already spent four hundred dollars on a set of bearings, and um, you get kind of wrapped up in things, and you end up you know, most of the time making stupid decisions. So um, I'm glad I just put it out there like that. And Tony's right. You know, you get you get wrapped up in just getting it done and you forget about, you know, what's going to happen in the long run. Now you got to spend three times as much time with it. Now you can't do what you really want with it. So just spend the time, do it right, take a step back,